a chapter a day to brighten your way. How can this large land still not be enough? Hello, friends. Let us read the Bible together. Today we'll be reading Joshua chapter 17. We read earlier in Deuteronomy that Moses promised that half the tribe of Manasseh and the tribes of Reuben and Gad would acquire the land east of the Jordan River. This chapter records the land within Canaan allotted to the other half of the tribe of Manasseh. Within this, we will also see that Joshua gave women the right to inheritance in accordance with God's promise in the amended law, which was a great breakthrough in the culture of the time. After the division of land, it seems that the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh still had something to say. What happened? Let's read chapter 17 together. Joshua, chapter 17. Then allotment was made to the people of Manasseh, for he was the firstborn of Joseph. To Maker, the firstborn of Manasseh, the father of Gilead, were allotted Gilead and Bashan, because he was a man of war. And allotments were made to the rest of the people of Manasseh by their clans, Abiezer, Helik, Azrael, Shechem, Hefer, and Shemida. These were the male descendants of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, by their clans. Now Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, son of Gilead, son of Maker, son of Manasseh, had no sons but only daughters. And these are the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milcah, and Tirzah. They approached Eliezer the priest and Joshua the son of Nun and the leaders and said, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance along with our brothers. So according to the mouth of the Lord, he gave them an inheritance among the brothers of their father. Thus there fell to Manasseh ten portions, besides the land of Gilead and Bashan, which is on the other side of the Jordan, because the daughters of Manasseh received an inheritance along with his sons. The land of Gilead was allotted to the rest of the people of Manasseh. The territory of Manasseh reached from Asher to Mikmatha, which is east of Shechem. Then the boundary goes along southward to the inhabitants of En Tepua. The land of Tepua belonged to Manasseh, but the town of Tepua on the boundary of Manasseh belonged to the people of Ephraim. Then the boundary went down to the brook Cana. These cities to the south of the brook among the cities of Manasseh belonged to Ephraim. Then the boundary of Manasseh goes on the north side of the brook and ends at the sea, the land to the south being Ephraim's and that to the north being Manasseh's, with the sea forming its boundary. On the north Asher is reached, and on the east Issachar. Also in Issachar and in Asher, Manasseh had Beth Sheen and its villages, and Ibian and its villages, and the inhabitants of Dor and its villages, and the inhabitants of Endor and its villages, and the inhabitants of Tanakh and its villages, and the inhabitants of Megiddo and its villages. The third is Naphath. Yet the people of Manasseh could not take possession of those cities, but the Canaanites persisted in dwelling in that land. Now when the people of Israel grew strong, they put the Canaanites to forced labor, but did not utterly drive them out. Then the people of Joseph spoke to Joshua, saying, Why have you given me but one lot and one portion as an inheritance, although I am a numerous people, since all along the Lord has blessed me? And Joshua said to them, If you are a numerous people, go up by yourselves to the forest, and there clear ground for yourselves in the land of the Perizzites and the Rephaim since the hill country of Ephraim is too narrow for you. The people of Joseph said, The hill country is not enough for us, yet all the Canaanites who dwell in the plain have chariots of iron, both those in Beth Sheen and its villages, and those in the valley of Jezreel. Then Joshua said to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manasseh, You are a numerous people and have great power. You shall not have one allotment only, but the hill country shall be yours, for though it is a forest, you shall clear it and possess it to its farthest borders, for you shall drive out the Canaanites, though they have chariots of iron and though they are strong. Praise be to God! Joshua himself was a member of the tribe of Ephraim, but he wasn't biased at all. He chose to distribute the inheritance in accordance with God's will, and he encouraged everyone to rely on God's presence to develop these territories. If they had higher hopes, Joshua believed that God was willing to bless them as well. In fact, Ephraim and Manasseh had already received a large share of the land, 
adding up to a larger area than that of the other tribes, but they still felt that it wasn't enough and wanted more. Dear friends, even if we received double the abundant blessings from God, as long as we don't have a contented heart, we might be trapped by this idea of not enough. Let's trust that God's gifts are always enough for us, and let's keep working hard for God with a heart of contentment. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for all the wonderful blessings you've given me. Please give me a contented heart that is happy and satisfied with your grace in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A chapter a day to brighten your way. See you tomorrow. Jesus loves you and I love you too.